Welcome group, uh, very excited to be here, very excited that we could partner with Jordana and her team to, to sponsor this. So my name is Joe Perkins, I'm the Executive Vice President of Operations at Carolina Handling. We're an intra-logistics solutions company here in the Southeast and I'll tell you a lot more about what we do and who we are in just a minute. Um, but before we jump into that, um, I want to tell you a little bit about who I am on a personal level. So. I uh, grew up in Goldsboro, North Carolina, just 10 miles away from Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. Um, my dad owned a local watchmaking business that was supported by many active duty military and veteran personnel. So very accustomed to seeing flight suits and fatigues that would freak, frequent his shop on a daily basis. Um, for me growing up, you know, the roar of F-15s uh, was the highlight of my day, getting to watch them take off and land from the windows of my dad's shop. Um, and while I didn't serve myself, I've got many friends and family who have served in various branches of the military. So I am so thankful for the service and the freedom that each of you have allowed for me and my family. Um, I am so honored to be here today to discuss your transition back into civilian life and try to dispel some of the uncertainty that's taken over the world in the past few years. So whether that's economic uncertainty, political uncertainty, or just uncertainty about your own future. Um, I'm hopeful that our time today uh, will leave you uh, agreeing that there are industries out there that are weathering any storms that may be brewing, and specifically the supply chain industry may be a great landing spot for you. So without further ado, I'll jump right in. So little background on Carolina Handling. While we're not a small company, uh, we're, we're nearing that $500 million mark, um, there's still a pretty good chance that you haven't heard of us due to our line of work. Um, and if you're not familiar with warehousing, supply chain, you probably haven't heard of our parent company, uh, which is Raymond. But I know you've heard of Toyota, um, and that's ultimately who our companies roll up to. So Toyota and Raymond have been producing industrial lift trucks, fort lifts, material handling equipment for over 100 years. Um, and we are the brand leader in that industry. For our dealership, Carolina Handling has been in the material handling business for just over 57 years. Um, so really cool, just right here in North Charlotte, we started as a Fort Lift dealer in a gas station uh, with less than 10 associates. And we've grown today, if you were in the welcoming remarks, you heard Lauren Murphy talk about the fact that we're nearing 750 associates. Um, so. Over the years, we've continued to transform into this end-to-end intralogistics provider, and we cover the Southeast, so North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, and the panhandle of Florida. And you may hear me use the word intralogistics several times today, and just to give you my Webster definition of this, intralogistics is simply the integration of products and services that takes the materials and all of that, it creates an ecosystem to move materials more effectively and more efficiently. So while we can sell any equipment that you may find in a warehouse like forklifts, rack, conveyors, automation, our main goal is to help customers optimize their supply chain and create higher levels of service to their end user or their consumer, their customer. Um, and we do this by helping identify the inefficiencies that exist today, the process gaps, and we create standards that remove waste. So many of you have heard of Lean or you've heard of Toyota Production Systems or TPS. We call it RLM for Raymond Lean Management. And we go in and consult on how the customer can maximize their operational capabilities and what equipment they can use to help them do that. So we truly see ourselves as a partner um, that can help them end to end um, with all of their supply chain operations. So I'm gonna take you through some of the economic and industry data that, that we see. And just like every other industry, we've seen our fair share of turmoil over the past few years and even throughout the pandemic. So I'm sure everyone remembers seeing this on the news. There were massive backups at all of our ports, cargo ships that were sitting off the east and the west coast that were just dotting the ocean waiting to get unloaded. Um, this was costing suppliers millions of dollars in freight and delayed shipments. 
Or what about this? Um, I'm sure you know someone who overbought toilet paper because you were afraid of not being able to find any. And when things got tough, everything pointed back to the supply chain. Uh, maybe it was bad press or maybe it was an opportunity for companies to learn that they really needed a partner like us. But either way, all eyes were on us. So the world wasn't ready for the pandemic. Um, the subsequent impacts, uh, all of that that was coming at us, that was about to hit us. Um, and get, I get it. You know, our lives were flipped upside down for a while. Uh, we saw businesses close. We ate a ton of takeout. We bumped elbows. We searched for hand sanitizer that didn't smell like tequila or vodka, which I think rum was probably next. Um, it was a long few years, and thankfully, we came out of it on the other side. Um, we commented recently at a meeting that it was so nice not to hear so much about COVID anymore, at least in the workplace. Um, but it's still apparent that we're facing looming effects of the pandemic. Um, labor shortages due to an exodus of workers that that left the workforce during COVID. Many of those were from the baby boomer generation um, that decided just not to come back post pandemic. We've seen inflation. We've seen growing interest rates. And with all of these effects come economic and political uncertainty. So I can only imagine what each of you are thinking during this phase of your life. You're returning to civilian life. Uncertainty abounds. Um, are we heading into a recession or depression? Where can I find stability for my future? Where can I go that will still give me a collaborative environment, much like you experienced in the military? Um, is there volatility that's going to come in the next 12 to 24 months with it being an election cycle? And then ultimately, where can I go where I gain fulfillment in my career? So, we do a lot of research on economic and industry trends at Carolina Handling, and I love this stuff. I spend a ton of time sharing this data with my teams to help them understand what's in front of us. And what I'd like to do is share some of that data with you today in hopes that it'll relieve some of the uncertainty and maybe even illustrate how material handling and supply chain could be a next step in your career. Um, so. I think it's important to point out that I am not an economist um, and, and don't claim to be, uh, but I follow and network with many economists and industry experts that I'm able to pull data from. Um, just yesterday, I met with Comerica Bank, who mentioned that they are actually seeing a lot of the same trends and thoughts that, that we have. So today, I'm not going to present my own opinion, but rather how I've interpreted the data that I've had shared with me. Um, so you can't turn on the news without hearing some of these economic topics. Um, and I'm sure you can guess what some of them are, right? So it's inflation. It's the overall cost of consumer goods, which I don't know about you, but my grocery bill has nearly tripled over the past couple of years. And not just because I have 17 year old twins, but a gallon of milk costs much more than what it did. Um, labor shortages. You go into restaurants or, or certain businesses and you see a sign that says, please be patient. We are short staffed. Just thank the people who came to work today. Um, consumer demand, right? So the Amazon effect is real. We all want our products and delivered or all products and services delivered, no matter who we're getting it from. Um, and, and Amazon has forced that into the supply chain. And some of us even want them this afternoon. Um, but based on all of this, it would be easy to assume that overall sales are down due to inflation or that companies may be going under due to labor shortages. But in reality, we're seeing the opposite. So I'm going to start off by taking a look at what's been going on in the U.S. recently. Um, and we'll start with GDP. So we look at GDP because we believe it is a metric that is used um, as an indicator of the overall economic health. Uh, we saw a big surge as we were coming out of COVID in 2021. And in late 22, we saw a dip as some of the interest rates were changing. Um, but overall, we still saw positive growth here. This year, we continue to see a positive growth trend, although, again, not nearly as high as what we saw coming out of COVID. Um, but overall, I'll reiterate, this is an indicator that our economy is still holding out even though we have inflationary pressure. 
Um, one interesting statistic that I will tell you is that today um, our GDP is made up by 9.1% or 9.1% of our GDP is made up from U.S. business logistics. So people are spending money and products have to move. And as long as there's a need to move products across states, the countries and even the world, then we're going to continue to see that push. Um, next slide, I'll go into consumer spending. When we look at consumer spending, it is likely driven by the continued positive GDP that you just saw on the previous slide. So spending growth may have slowed, but again, still on a positive trend here. We have seen a pullback in some long-term purchases like cars, new construction, as far as you know, single family homes and things like that. And some of that being due to the interest rates and, and what they have caused. But overall, consumers continue to spend despite inflation, which I'll talk about on the next slide. So we believe that this spend is likely due to the continued rise in salaries and wages across the U.S. Last year in the U.S. alone, we saw a 6% increase over this time last year. So employers are fighting to keep associates. Um, the labor market is tight. Um, we deal with some of these same pressures at Carolina Handling. I think in this morning's session, Lauren mentioned we've got 48 job openings right here in the Southeast at this point in time. So it's not uncommon that you're hearing about sign-on bonuses, stay bonuses, cost of living adjustments, other types of items like that. Uh, right now, employers will do just about anything to keep their people. But why is this? And let me show you a little something on the labor market. So this image is showing the number of unemployed persons per job opening in each state. And if you take a look, I mean, we're pretty consistent across all of our states here. So on average, there's only a half of a person per job opening right here in the Southeast. Now, this may be slightly different in your hometown, depending on the industries that, that support your area, but overall, our nation is facing a labor shortage. Um, this has been the case since COVID started, which forced employers to look for different ways that they could stay afloat. Uh, maybe this was through automation and automating parts of their processes. Um, maybe it was through eliminating wasteful steps so that their teams could work smarter, not harder. So why am I telling you all of this? And what does it mean for you or really even for me? Um, the labor shortage is propping up consumer spending. As employers continue to, to fight to keep people and unemployment stay, stay, unemployment rates stay low, um, we see that that consumer spending is going to continue. And consumer spending is still driving sales and supply chain growth because our customers are having to move product. So companies are having to get really creative as they struggle to fill open roles which is leading to automated equipment and systems. Now, I do want you to keep in mind that when our customers seek to automate a process, 99% of the time, it is not to eliminate a role or eliminate a person. Oftentimes, it actually creates a unique role within the facility. Um, but automation and optimization is about getting rid of waste and allocating the resources that they have correctly. So oftentimes we'll bring in an automated system and we will see that the people that it may be supplementing their work, they may be repurposed within the facility. But going back to all of the trends, um, the leading indicators show an extremely positive outlook for the supply chain as companies continue to prepare to optimize and automate their processes. The economic and political news can be daunting, which is why I love sharing this information for our people. But from everything that I read, everything that I discuss with the people that I mentioned earlier, I see a really strong forecast for the supply chain as well as the material handling industry. Our sales are continuing to grow. Um, we continue to add people daily to our team. We continue to create new roles within our company. 
And with this comes great career growth opportunities. Um, and like I said, this isn't just Carolina Handling. This is the entire industry as a whole. It's probably one of the top things that when I'm meeting with senior leadership at some of our customers that they tell us this is our major focus right now. So if I jump into some of our industry trends, I'd love to give you a few examples and statistics to help you illustrate this. So um, first, uh, private warehouse construction. So this is a huge indicator of what is to come for us, for our sales and for our industry. And when you look at this graph, um, we're in a phase of slowing growth, but still up 16 and a half percent over last year. So as demand slows, retailers are trying to rid themselves of excess inventory, utilize their current warehouse space. And we do expect to see a slight decline in early 24. However, their planning and everything we see points to a rebound in 2025. Um, so all that we talked about a few minutes ago around consumer spending and the labor market and all of that, that's what's really going to drive that rebound that, that we see in 2025. So for every warehouse that goes under construction, you have to think it fuels and grows our company. It continues to push products and service that are supported by our industry. I just heard a staggering fact the other day um, around warehouse space, and we had one of our real estate partners in here with us today who confirmed it. But in our market, so North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, and that panhandle, there is currently 110 million square feet of warehouse space currently being developed. Um, I'm sure you can think of cities that, that don't have 110 million square feet in them. Um, one of the things that uh, our marketing team illustrated the other day, we have a branch office in Fairburn and 110 million square feet, I think they said is 18 square miles. Um, and Fairburn isn't even that size. So, I mean, this is massive, but what's even more staggering is that there is 370 million more square feet that is proposed that has not gone into a build phase yet right here within the Southeast. So again, everything points to a really bright future for material handling and for the supply chain. Now, let me jump into e-commerce for a minute. Um, we believe like e-commerce is driving a ton of this development. Um, if you take a look at the graph here, um, this is showing online sales. And if you look at that growth, it continues to soar. When we were going through COVID, we certainly understood it. Uh, but, you know, as consumers, we've adopted that means of shopping and spending. And we just continue to see that grow. So just in 22 alone, uh, the e-commerce market grew by 8% to over a trillion dollars. Um, it was previous year, it was 871 billion. It is now 14 and a half percent of the entire U.S. retail market. Um, and I'm sure you feel that when you go to malls and things like that, you're, you're seeing a change in the way that retailers do business. Um, and even with the additional space, supply chain professionals will struggle with getting customized orders to their individual consumers at a faster pace. Um, today, our customers are forced to ship individual cases and not only individual cases, but I'm shipping a green shirt and a medium and I'm shipping a blue shirt and a large and maybe a small because, hey, who knows which one we're going to keep and which one we're going to return. But, you know, a few years ago, they were shipping in pallet quantities. And now to think that pallet is broken down to where they're shipping in each is, it becomes much more difficult on our customers. So even though the volume of their products may be similar, uh, the labor and the space that's required to ship in this manner has changed drastically. So this, again, it all leads them back to needing automated equipment, consultative partners, um, just someone who can come in and help them be better for their customer. So. Take a minute, I'm gonna wrap up industry trends and then pause for a second to see if you got any questions. But when we share this type of data, it gets our team revved up. They are ready to go out there and talk to customers, really understand what they're seeing. And they know that based on that, they've got a long career ahead of themselves at Carolina Handling 
Um, and likewise, our customers see very similar things. Um, and that's all as long as we continue to provide elite service and, and maintenance to our customers. So a few years ago, we announced the vision to be an elite intra logistics provider right here within the Southeast. It took some time for our folks, if, if I'm honest, to really adopt the fact that we were changing because when we started, you know, you go back to North Charlotte when we were a Fort Lift company in a gas station with five associates, we were that way for, for 50 years. And when we decided that we were really going to jump in with both feet to the supply chain and provide everything to our customers, it took our associates a minute um, to grasp that. So I couldn't be more excited about where the supply chain is, where the material handling industry is today. Um, but I'll pause here for just a minute and just see, are there any questions um, that you may have on that piece? So I think one question that I'd see that just came in was what type of skills are you looking for from future prospects? Um, so great question. And I'll try to answer this both from the industry as well as from Carolina Handling. Um, first, from Carolina Handling, um, we're seeking good people first. We believe we can teach a lot of the skill sets required to take care of our customers. Um, but out there today in the in the industry, in the material handling space, supply chain, there's a lot of analytical skills that customers are looking for. There's so much data that is at customers' fingertips today, um, and they are sitting there sorting through piles and piles of data. Having an analytical mindset around how you can problem solve, create better strategy, and things like that are something that is super exciting to our customers. Um, try to think of a couple more skill sets that, that may really play well. Um, Project management is another key thing that we see, and I'll get into that here in just a little bit. Um, but being able to organize, um, I spoke about lean. Um, people that have a lean mindset and can help customers eliminate waste because there's only so many hours in a day and they're trying to increase throughput and productivity. Um, those are several things that I know we, as well as our customers, are looking for today. Um, so with this element of willing to teach, how would you like us to show that we are able to learn quickly? Um, so with that question, there are a lot, and I mean ourselves included, um, there are a lot of companies today that are using, utilizing personality assessments, um, the interview process to really get into the depth of you being able to do that. One example for us, especially around our technicians, is we have some very simple tests that our training department put together. And, you know, it's, it's really just understanding the aptitude of the individuals. Um, because again, you know, the training that Carolina Handling, our customers, a lot of these companies are putting into associates, um, I mentioned earlier, they'll do anything to keep them, but that anything to keep them really starts with creating the base for that associate and helping them be able to learn their processes and, and their customers' processes. Um, so I don't know that you have to be able to illustrate anything quickly. Um, I think you have to have a willingness to learn and be open, uh, open-minded to what that customer or that, that potential uh, partner may be asking you to do. Um, are you still trying to grow employee size and how fast is your company growing? Um, so yes, I mean, right now, Lauren mentioned this morning, we have 48 job openings. I will tell you if I could hire a hundred technicians to go out and serve our customers today, we would do that. We've got many open roles internally, whether it's coordination, project management, things like that. Um, that are posted, a lot of sales roles that are posted, but we have continued to see year over year growth as long as I have been here and don't see that really slowing anytime soon. So really excited to continue to add to Carolina Handling. Um,
<laughs> so curious, haven't thought about this space, but definitely intriguing. I will tell you, um, and I'm going to get into a, a lot of this as far as my personal story and where I came from. So for me, um, played baseball in college, went and played baseball professionally, coached in college, never once thought about getting into the supply chain industry. If you go and look me up, you're going to see that my degree is in sports management has absolutely nothing to do with moving a brown box throughout a facility. Um, but I get up each and every day and love what we do, love getting the opportunity to serve customers in a different way. We are very blessed here. Uh, we serve 8,000 customers and I can't even tell you how many different verticals. It's automotive, it's, um, it's Amazon, it's Walmart. Um, it's pharmaceutical, it's food, it's processing. So each and every day, our team has the opportunity to go in and, and see something different. And gosh, the way this world is changing and how we've had to adapt is just super, super exciting. Um, so a couple more. Um, what do you see on the horizon for this industry for someone who won't be getting out for 12 to 18 months? Um, again, I... I can only see continued growth in, in this area. And as I mentioned earlier, um, starting the process of looking, um, we love the fact that we have the veteran presence that we do. Again, just the fact that you, you went and served our country the way that you do. Um, I'm very familiar with the sacrifices that, that our military personnel and veterans have had to make. Um, but I would strongly encourage you to start doing your research on the industry and understanding what types of roles are out there that really interest you. Um, because you can start having those conversations with some of these places now. Um, the fact that we see continued growth in this space, I, I can't see the job market changing. Um, one statistic that I didn't show you is that the reason that we are at the place that we are today as far as the lack of labor to support the job openings is because our nation as a whole um, is not reproducing at the same rate we once were. So typically uh, you looked at a household and you had two children born per household and they typically followed the path that mom and dad set forth and mom and dad were in the workforce. When you look at it today, it's at like 1.6. And even at 1.6, a lot of people are choosing to have children later in life. And so we are not replacing the workforce at the same rate that we're exiting it. So it doesn't matter if you're coming out of your role today or if you're coming out of it six years from now. Um, I really don't see this shortage going anywhere. And again, our customers are going to continue to have to look for unique ways that they're going to supplement their labor to be able to move products. Because I can tell you, especially in my household, you know, whenever I go home to my wife, she hasn't changed her buying habits, nor do I think that's going to happen anywhere else. So, um, all right, jumping into my personal story, and I told you a little bit about it. Um, I've been in the supply chain for nearly, I will call it my entire professional career because while it was professional baseball, um, I was having way too much fun to call myself professional. Um, but I've been in this space nearly my whole career. Um, it's been exciting to get to watch it grow, expand over the years. Um, I joined the supply chain industry in 2004, mainly because baseball was paying about $18,000 a year. I was newly married. My wife said, you need to make a little bit more money than, than what I was. Um, but I will tell you, I would have never guessed I would have seen the transformation that we have due to the creation of Amazon, the effects of the pandemic. Um, and there were really two big disruptions in our industry that have propelled us forward. Um, you would have expected that the pandemic would have hindered us in some way. But in reality, it was the exact opposite. So before I started at Carolina Handling, I worked for one of our customers. So my relationship here goes back 20 years. And I weathered the downturn of 2008 there. And I got to see firsthand that the need to move goods can only be impacted so much by a downturn. People are still going to eat. They're still going to have to purchase certain goods and services. So while we're not recession proof, 
we're pretty resistant to it. Um, so today, whether it be political uncertainty, economic uncertainty, or again, just career stability that keeps you up at night, I would encourage each of you to take a look at our industry as you're looking for your next step in your career. Um, I'm excited about that growth that I mentioned a minute ago. I don't see it stopping. Um, there are new roles that are being added all the time, new titles that are being seen within our customers. Um, and it's going to continue to add to this industry. So I mentioned, you know, some of those roles, whether it's analysts, project managers, management, um, a lot of those align really well with roles that, that we see coming out of the military. Um, and I'll tell you, you know, we know firsthand the skill set, the leadership that each one of you are bringing um, from, from where you are today in serving our country. Um, mentioned this morning, 12 to 13 percent of our organization is made up by military veterans and even some guys that are still in an active duty, whether that's reserves or, or some other branch. Um, and we get to see and work beside that value each and every day. Um, on the flip side, we also see tons of veterans that are joining our customers where, you know, we've got networking that happens there um, and they're joining those customers within supply chain. Um, and we've seen just as much success for those associates who join our customers as, as the success where they join here. Um, so always remember that knowledge can be taught. And going back to one of the questions earlier, like, what do we need to know? How do we need to prepare ourselves? How do we need to illustrate that? Anyone who is hiring a veteran or someone who is currently serving knows that there's teamwork, there's motivation, there's leadership qualities that you gained through your military service. And those are the things that I will tell you are priceless. So I would encourage you find your next career or home at a company that adopts a crawl, walk, run uh, type of atmosphere, uh, something that's very similar to what you're used to. Um, they can teach you that new job, but they cannot teach you the skills that you're taking away from your military service. Um, now, if you're interested in careers within our industry, um, I'm gonna pop this up. There's a QR, a couple QR codes here. The left will take you to an industry job board, um, and I would encourage you to leverage those resources that are on that page. Um, and then the one on the right takes you to our very own page right here at Carolina Hanley. Um, so we'd love it if you would take a look um, and maybe jump in to, to this space with us. Um, again, whether that's supply chain, material handling, or right here at Carolina Hanley. I would also encourage you to, when you get out of the session, um, we've got a few testimonials from a couple of Carolina Handling Associates within our virtual booth. Um, go and look at what they said about their transition from the military to civilian life. Um, I, when I read both of them, it was just really interesting knowing that I was going to get to present this today and hearing how their stories kind of tied to what I wanted to share with you. So that's the bulk of what I've got. Um, I really appreciate you allowing me to come and spend time with you today. Um, once again, can't thank you enough for your service. Um, I mentioned earlier, I've seen what it does to, to families and individuals when you're away from home for six months or a year. And um, gosh, just cannot thank you enough.